It's really a crime novel set at the heart of the greatest crime of all. So it's a crime within a much greater crime. That's part of how it works. Our grandfather fought in the First World War all the way through from 1914 to 1918. He was there throughout the whole thing. He was at Gallipoli. He was at Passchendaele. He was in the 100 Days campaign in 1918, which was a hideously uh, bloody episode in the war. And we discovered 40 years after he died that my grandfather had kept a huge amount of material from his time uh, commanding a company in the Lancashire Fusiliers, including pretty much all the ch trench maps he would have been issued with. This is just one from the Somme area in 1918. It shows the German trench positions in blue, the British positions in red, and he's kept uh, about 40 of these things. This one's been issued to the officer commanding B Company, 7th Battalion, that's him. So this is him, probably 1918. He's in his captain's uniform. And we also found among the photographs, this one, of this young woman. It's a postcard she's sent him but there's no name on it and we don't know who she is. But he kept the photograph all his life. When you see the, the amount of care he took in preserving so much material from that time, it obviously was important to him. So in a way, I felt inspired to try and make some sense of, or at least some use of it in a novel. And that's really why Two Storm Wood was written. The book is set in February and March of 1919, this is a few months after the armistice. And the Allies were faced with a problem, what to do with the Western Front. It was 400 miles long, 20,000 miles of trench works and defensive positions, and also home to the unclaimed remains of about, well, several million men. And the Allies thought they were missing in action over 450,000 men. They had to be found and reburied and identified. It was a huge, huge effort, but also an incredibly dangerous one because millions of unexploded shells had been sewn into the ground. The turn of a spade could be enough to detonate them. And so the story is set uh, at that time and in that uh, effort uh, underground, uh, an atrocity is discovered and it's about uh, the search for the perpetrators of that atrocity and what was what was going on, what led up to it. And it's a story about a woman, who of course has been in England all through the war, who against uh, all advice, military law, custom, and probably, you know, self-preservation, sets off to find her missing fiancé who, who went missing in action in the final few months of the war. And she goes right to the heart of the Western Front and won't take no for an answer and is determined to find out what happened to him. Mysterious, gripping, shocking. I think a book about the First World War has to be shocking. If it isn't, it isn't doing its job because there are a few more shocking episodes in human history as far as I'm concerned. So I hope it does all those things. I hope it's very entertaining and gripping. But I also hope you think, wow, did that really happen? Because it did.